Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a progress bar in your app. And a progress bar can be a nice visual for your users if you have a rather lengthy user onboarding process or account creation process, um, or if you're doing surveys or have questionnaires in your app, uh, or even quizzes if your app has quizzes for your users. And basically it's a nice visualization so that your users can see at what, how much progress they have made um, in terms of the onboarding process or the survey or the quiz. And it's simply, we got a couple of arrows on here. So if you can imagine every time that the user clicks on an arrow, it goes to uh, show different content, either onboarding questions or survey questions or quiz questions. And at the end, when they get to 100%, I just have a nice little text here, again, a visual cue to say that they're done, and then also a submit button. And then you can click to the left button here and get back to, to the beginning. So let's, let's jump into the design here and let's go over to the plugins. And, and this is, where is it, progress bar. And let's do a quick search here, add plugins. And okay, progress bar. And this is the plugin right here, progress bar made by Bubble. So you want to install that. It's free to, to install. And then over here on the design, We'll go to uh, progress bar. So it's right here in the element tree under visual elements, progress bar. So you want to basically just go and drop that onto your, your page and double click on that. Now you will have to uh, fill in what the percent is going to be uh, for this demo. I've actually created a custom state. Uh, so it's progress bar A and that's what this element is, progress bar A and then index number. So let me go, if I click on the uh, element inspector here, you can see I've got this custom state index number, index number right there, and then it's of type number. And then the default value I have is 20. And the reason why I have it as 20 is, for this demo, I just uh, assumed it was a five page um, or five uh, groups, if you will. Uh, questionnaire or survey, and so 20% uh, completion per page. And I don't have any conditional setup on this, so this is pretty much all set. I used all the default um, values. I did actually I did change the color. The default is this. I think it was this purple color. Uh, let's come over to the arrow. So this would be for your users to navigate um, to go to the next uh, page of questions. Uh, and we got the workflow here. Now on the workflow, I have it set up so that once the user gets to the end, to the fifth page, if you will, um, I don't want them to keep adding or incrementing to the uh, custom state value. So I have it so that when the progress bar uh, A's index number is less than 100, uh, then I will go and execute this step here. And this step here, so it's progress uh, bar A, which is the progress bar's element, the index number, that's the custom state for it, and then the value. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that uh, custom state progress bar A's index number's value, and I'm adding 20 to it. So basically, let me just go over here and I'll show you. Um, so element action, set state, and then it's the progress bar A. And then for the custom state, it's index number. And then all I'm doing is I'm taking progress bar A's index number and, and Bubble is smart enough to know that that's the only state uh, that is associated with this element. And then I just go plus, and then I type in 20. And that's it, as simple as that. So again, basically I have this uh, only when condition so that if the value is less than 100, I can keep adding or incrementing the index number by 20. Similarly, if I come over 
to the design. Uh, you have this left arrow here. And the workflow for this is similar. I've got it set up so that if the index number is greater than 20, then I, again, same state, uh, progress A, index number, progress uh, minus 20. Okay, so this allows me to decrement, but it'll only decrement if the value is greater than, than 20. Um, and that way it prevents me from, or the workflow from getting below uh, 20. And then uh, if, I, if I don't do that, what happens is from a user experience, if I keep on clicking the arrow, it'll actually, the number will get less than zero. And then I'd have to click right a couple of times before it starts going through. So that's a user experience uh, right here condition to, to make it a little bit more user friendly. Okay, and what I've, I've got this start here. So again, simple start, and I put this condition on there, progress A, index number is 20. So I don't want this uh, element to uh, be visible if it's greater than, than 20. So when it's 20, have it shown, and the initial value here is element is visible on page low. The, the default is checked. I clicked it off so that um, I let the condition drive that. And then similarly uh, for this when it's done, when the index number is 100, make this visible. Similarly, uh, the element is visible on page load. I have that checked off. The other thing that I have on here is a submit button. Uh, again, it's not visible on page load and I have this condition so that when the index number is 100, I make it visible. I also put this additional conditional in there that when it's hovered that it changes color. Again, a nice little visual cue. And that is basically it for the design. Again, so if I click left here, it's not going to go less than 20. If I click more than the 100%, it's not going to let me go past that. And that's basically uh, it for the design. Again, a very nice visual for uh, your users and their experience with your app. If you have a lengthy onboarding uh, process or if you're conducting surveys in your, your app or quizzes and so forth, uh, a progress bar can be a really nice addition to your app for your users. If you have any questions, uh, leave me a note below. If you like this video, please give me a, a thumbs up. I, I do appreciate those. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, I do have upcoming videos and you will get notified uh, from YouTube uh, when those are available.